Right now I'm here with the defendant. Tell us your side of the story, bro. I mean, it was an unfortunate situation, man, really. A case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know? This is the case of to weave or not to be weave. Be right back for the law. In 1965, a group of students at Des Moines Independent Community School District came together to protest the Vietnam War and show their support for a truce. These students held a meeting in the home of 16-year-old Christopher Eckhart to plan the peaceful protest where they decided to wear black armbands throughout the month of December and to fast on December 16th and New Year's Eve. When the principals of the Des Moines School District learned of the protest, they decided to meet on December 14th, two days before the first fasting, and created a policy that any student wearing an armband would be asked to remove it and refusal to do so would result in suspension since they believed that the protest disrupted the school environment. With the knowledge of this new policy, Mary Beth Tinker, a 13-year-old student, and Christopher Eckhart continued to wear the armbands and participate in the fast, which resulted in their suspension. The next day, John Tinker was suspended for the same reasoning. These students did not return to school after the planned end of the protest. When they did return, they decided to wear black for the rest of the school year to still show their support for a truce. These students decided to file a First Amendment lawsuit with the help of their parents because they believed that their freedom of speech was violated with the new district policy regarding the protest. They also sought an injunction to prevent the district from disciplining the students for engaging in peaceful protests. The case went to the district court and was dismissed since they decided that the school's disciplinary actions were within reason. The students appealed and the case went to the U.S. Supreme Court. The American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, then decided to back the students in what was to become a four-year battle. The question that needed to be answered was, is a prohibition against wearing armbands in public school a violation of students' freedom of speech protections? On February 24, 1969, the court ruled 7-2 to two that students do not shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. The court found that the First Amendment applied to public schools and school officials could not censor student speech unless it disrupted the educational process. Because wearing a black armband was not disruptive, the court held that the First Amendment protected the right of students to wear them. The court's majority opinion, written by Justice Abe Fortas, went on to affirm the freedom that young people have under the Constitution. In our system, state-operated schools may not be enclaves of totalitarianism. School officials do not possess absolute authority over their students. Students are possessed of fundamental rights which the state must respect, just as they themselves must respect their obligations to the state. Continued to write, in our system, students may not be regarded as closed-circuit recipients of only that which the state chooses to communicate. They may not be confined to the expression of those sentiments that are officially approved. In the absence of a specific showing of constitutionally valid reasons to regulate their speech, students are entitled to freedom of expression of their views. In the end, Tinker versus Des Moines is what became a landmark Supreme Court ruling that cemented students' right to free speech in school.